In one of the previous videos, we've briefly discussed one of the most groundbreaking announcements when it comes to cosmology and astrophysics of 2023. The announcement for the detection of very unusual gravitational background noise that seems to be caused by something really massive. That video is obviously in the description below. But on that same day, a completely different announcement was made by a completely different team and was also to some extent somewhat groundbreaking. But one announcement went viral, the other one sort of disappeared into obscurity, receiving almost no press time. As a matter of fact, most of the press didn't really do a good job explaining what exactly was discovered, even though it was actually pretty groundbreaking as well. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. So today we're going to be discussing that last viral announcement, announced in late June of 2023, in regards to neutrinos. And specifically in regards to this. Now before I explain to you what this is, let's check out one of my most favorite websites created by Nick Rissinger. This is Glimoscope. It represents the Milky Way galaxy as we see it from planet Earth, but in different frequencies. Visible light, X-ray light, the gamma rays, the infrared light, the microwave observations, and radio light, which basically represents the main focus for this particular website and for the scientists studying all of this. What I think the best visual example of all of this being right here. This is a nearby galaxy known as Centaurus A, and this is what it looks like in radio light. But it becomes barely visible in any other light, especially infrared, and even in the visible light you're barely going to see it at all. Although because it does have an active nucleus, or an active black hole in the middle, it is kind of visible in some of the higher frequencies such as gamma rays, but most visible in radio light. Anyway, that's kind of beside the point. The point here is that the galaxy, or the entire night skies, appear to us entirely different depending on what frequencies of light you use to observe it. So what we see with our eyes is entirely incomplete. But now, for the first time ever, the scientists were able to create the first map that's produced out of neutrinos. And although it's not as advanced as some of the other maps, it's already quite impressive. In this case, based on approximately 60,000 different detections over a period of about 10 years. Which in the process also discovers something very strange and somewhat unexplained about the Milky Way galaxy. Something we're going to discuss in a few minutes. First though, well, let me just clarify exactly what these neutrinos are and how we are detecting them here on planet Earth, because by itself it's already super impressive. Now the website for all of this is of course in the description below, but in a nutshell it uses what's known as IceCube Neutrino Detector, a facility located in Antarctica that was designed and built with only a single purpose. It uses these optical modules to try to detect neutrinos as they pass through planet Earth. But it does so by suspending thousands of these optical sensors deep into the ice of Antarctica where there isn't really much it can interact with except for particles that can actually go through all of this ice. As you can see the depth here is almost 3 kilometers and there are over 5000 different sensors all connected into one single network. And in terms of the sheer scale, this is pretty much as crazy as it gets. You have a remote facility located in the middle of Antarctica where thousands of different tiny detectors are trying to discover these invisible particles that barely interact with any matter and usually pass through everything without any effect. But sometimes a neutrino passes through the location, emitting what's known as Cherenkov radiation. This is only produced when the neutrino interacts with one of the atoms inside. And this creates a kind of a three-dimensional shape that can then be used to track where the neutrino came from. Which by itself is already an enormous task, but it's been done several times now. And so after a couple of decades of research, various research teams behind all of these studies started to discover really really powerful events coming from distant objects somewhere out there in the rest of the universe. Now intriguingly, some of the first ones discovered were actually some of the most unusual ones as well. That's because they were so extremely powerful. And they were coming from some really distant objects out there. And actually not just distant, but also extremely powerful. Some of the first cases were from well-known blazers, very very powerful massive black holes whose jets are pointed directly at us. And so back in 2012, the ice cube made some of its first official discoveries. Two neutrinos with energy approximately 100 million times more powerful than anything from a typical supernova. Although at first it wasn't really clear where this was coming from. But over time, more and more neutrinos were detected and many seemed to come from similar directions from similar locations around us, although the source of many is still unknown. The typical explanation involves either supermassive black holes, powerful galactic collisions, 
exceptionally powerful gamma ray bursts, possibly even gamma ray bursts involving neutron stars, or some other very very powerful supernova. And so, in a nutshell, the actual source of these neutrinos is still not clear, but they do often involve very very powerful events, although several locations have already been definitely confirmed. For example, we know that this blazer seems to produce very powerful neutrinos, it's located about 5.7 billion light years away from us, but the more interesting discovery was very recent, and it's actually from a galaxy known as Messier 77, the one that does resemble the Milky Way, and the one that was a source of neutrinos just a few months ago at the end of 2022. In this case we're talking about very powerful neutrinos that seem to be coming directly from the center from the active galactic nucleus. And quite a few neutrinos have also been discovered during a tidal disruption event that was detected in 2021 and then again in 2022, confirming that a lot of these powerful neutrinos in most cases seem to actually come from central black holes. But going back to those maps I showed you previously, the ones visible in various frequencies, in order to understand the universe even better, it's obviously important to create maps in other frequencies as well. And for many years, a lot of teams were trying to figure out if we can maybe use things like cosmic rays, the radiation that comes from every direction striking planet Earth and the radiation that's easily visible here on the planet. But the main problem with using cosmic rays involves their source or their origin. They're normally produced by charged particles, and when it comes to charged particles, they're obviously influenced by things like magnetic fields or other electromagnetic effects from the rest of the galaxy. And so in reality, even though they might appear like they came from a certain direction, their actual path might be very very different, and they might have come from entirely different direction altogether. And so trying to figure out where these powerful cosmic rays came from would be very challenging unless we had some other technique or unless we used some other particles. But I guess more importantly, none of this would be good to create any kind of a map. But in many cases, the same things that release cosmic rays also release various powerful neutrinos. And in some cases, as these cosmic rays collide with things in outer space, they also release highly energetic electron neutrinos, which then move through the universe pretty much entirely in a straight line, almost at the speed of light. And in some cases, they only become noticeable when they interact with something on planet Earth. And so it's really because they don't interact with stuff very often that they sort of are one of the better candidates to create various galactic maps. They come from very powerful events, they move in a straight line, and they only occasionally interact with things, making themselves noticeable. And so here, by waiting years and years and years, it becomes possible to collect just enough data to then make an actual map, a three-dimensional map of the most active regions across the universe where all these events must have come from. And this is precisely what various teams just did, announcing their results in June of 2023 picking up various emissions of neutrinos coming from various regions, including the center of the Milky Way galaxy. But obviously none of this was easy, especially because neutrinos can sometimes be also be produced by our own atmosphere, and so here the scientists behind these papers had to basically figure out what's coming from outer space and what's coming from a little bit closer to home. In the end, producing something like this with the overall statistical significance of 4.5 sigma, not exactly 5 sigma that's usually needed for a very confident discovery, but still good enough for something that needs to be investigated more. Making this a super important milestone for mapping the universe with neutrinos and not electromagnetic radiation. And one of the most important discoveries here so far is that everything around us seems to be pretty bright with neutrinos, but not our own galaxy. For some reason, most things in the Milky Way are very dim in comparison to some of the brighter objects out there. Or just to rephrase this, other galaxies such as Massey 77 or a lot of other different galaxies that were able to produce powerful neutrinos in the last 10 years are dramatically brighter and way more effective at producing neutrinos than pretty much anything inside our galaxy or inside the Milky Way. And this is after 12 years of observations and nearly 60,000 data points collected from various locations. And so the result is very surprising. A lot of other galaxies are very bright in neutrinos, some much brighter than others, but the Milky Way appears to be very diffuse and very dim. It's about 10 to sometimes 100 times dimmer in overall neutrino brightness compared to many other galaxies nearby. And this is a huge question. It's really uncertain why. 
I mean, okay, the actual answer is because there are just not enough high energy sources in the Milky Way galaxy, and overall our galaxy appears to be very mild, but it's just unclear why this is so. Why are so many other galaxies near us produce so much stuff and have so many energetic events and various areas filled with powerful radiation and, of course, produce super powerful neutrinos, but nothing as powerful exists in the Milky Way. At least nothing in modern times. 100 times dimmer than most galaxies investigated so far. Now obviously one potential answer could be once again in the center of the galaxy. Maybe all this is directly connected to the central black hole. And maybe it's actually now that we don't see any neutrinos because the Sagittarius A star black hole is extremely quiet. But it's possible that millions of years ago, when the jet was still active and the black hole was producing a lot of energy, the Milky Way galaxy could have been producing just as many neutrinos as a lot of other galaxies. So here the answer is that maybe we just find ourselves in extremely peaceful, quiet times. With the central black hole barely producing any energy and barely causing any disturbance to the rest of the galaxy. But we know that it was active millions of years ago, and maybe that's when it was also a lot more productive in terms of neutrinos. Although all of these questions can only be answered in the next few years, once even more data is collected, and once a lot of follow-up investigations are done by a lot of the teams behind these neutrino studies. Nevertheless, definitely some really cool stuff and some really intriguing discoveries, and something to look forward to once we have even more investigations more neutrino detectors, and even more data to create better maps. For now though, well, check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.